Hi, folks. Thank you for joining me. I'd like to talk a little bit about some <clears throat> variation in the uh, letters that we write, especially lowercase letters. And to il illustrate this, I'm going to write these pretty large. I'm going to use two of these lines and so uh, as an X height. And so basically, f I guess it's two, this, this will be our X height there. Okay. So as you know, with most of our lowercase letters in penmanship, we're basically looking at, you know, hit to the header, header line down to the baseline. So the header is here, the top line, the baseline is here, uh, and that's the lowercase e, just in case you don't recognize it. Uh, but there are some forms that don't obey, and I'm talking about the forms that would basically be thought of being included at the x height. So, for instance, let's take the lowercase r. Uh, one form of it would have it like this. Above the x height, and then coming down and around to the baseline like that. All right, rather than doing something like this with it, I'm not saying this couldn't be used in the context of a sentence, but if I had lots of letters attached, I don't think it would look quite as good. But typically, the R is kept above the baseline at its height. And in a similar position, the lowercase s the same way. All right, and again, that's the top of your X height. Um, and so this is important to keep in mind uh, and be consistent with it. <clears throat> so, and I'm just giving you general guidelines here. We also have some ways of using letters above the X height to give accentuation to things. For instance, it wasn't uncommon for the, s the first lowercase letter after a capital to be raised above the header line a slight degree. And this is typically done in ornamental penmanship. For instance, um, if I was to take, um, I don't know, let's take the, um, let me put an R here, and I'll do a more traditional shaped R, like this, capital R. Okay. And let's say, we're going to say, write the word real. The second letter would be, uh, or rebel, the, the, second, the, the first lowercase letter, or the second letter overall, would be an E. And if this is the header line and this is the baseline, the E could be started like this, almost like a pseudo-capital. And start into the next letter. And then the, if this is going to be the word real, the A would then come up like this, around. But as you can see, the E is brought above that header line. The A is not. Now, with just in this, if you look at enough specimens from the past, you'll see this sometimes done, more so in ornamental penmanship. It's something I actually like to do on occasion. Okay, so we're looking at header here, baseline here. So. Continuing on with letter form variation, let's take the lowercase d, okay, where you have what looks like an A form like this, coming around, and then you have a vertical line that comes down, connects to it, and then comes around, okay. There's another form of the d that I've, you know, that I've used from ornamental penmanship where you have a similar type of front section like this. But instead of going straight up, this thing kicks out and back like that. I mean, it's a pretty graceful form. It could be used at the end of a word or a sentence. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't use it a lot, but it can be done. If we take a look at the lowercase r, this is one, as I discussed earlier on, how it can come, again, if this is our x height, the top of the header line, the r typically comes slightly above that and then down and around for connection. Another form of the R that I've used, and I've seen others do this, where it looks almost like you're at the first stroke of an N, and you come up for about midway above the header line, come around, 
for a connector. That's another type of R that I've seen used. I've also been asked about the lowercase t, how it sometimes varies from the what you'd see with the typical crossbar to something that doesn't have a crossbar at all. So for instance, if we take a look at a lowercase t, and again, these are the lines we're using, and I come up like this, come down the typical lowercase t, and then put a crossbar above it. If you're at the end of a word or a sentence, which, you've can see, which you'll see in, in past specimens from masters, uh, especially in ornamental penmanship, and sometimes in plain penmanship, it's something that looks like this. And that's at the end of a word or a sentence. Uh, some folks do not like that, but if you're using, for instance, if you're going to be writing the word, this much, a short word, at, A-T, okay? That's the way it would look. I think it's a pretty letter, but if you, again, it depends on what you like and don't like. Uh, but these are variations that you can use to uh, add some elements of style to what you're doing. Um, and individualize it if you like using these things. I think overuse of any of these things can be problematic. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, the X is an interesting one. There's many different approaches to making a lowercase x. Uh, one of my favorites comes really from, from an ornamental uh, or, uh, engrosser script where you have this stroke that looked like that end stroke initially like this and comes around and up, okay? And there's a few ways to connect this. One is curl it in, have it come out like that. And the thing about this is it actually looks like it's starting to pinwheel. For some people, that's an uncomfortable look. Another way with the same basic initial start like this. would be to come in like this and then out like this. And some folks like the cross. I'm not a fan of the cross in there, but there's a few different ways you can do it. The idea is to have fun. Where you have to be careful is if you're claiming to do a certain form of Old Spencerian or the original form of Palmer method, you know, those forms are usually more specific. Um, I claim to do neither of those. Um, I've, as I said many times, my style is more uh, calligraphic penmanship, um, more finger movement. But I hope that you found that helpful, uh, and thank you.